The drivers of the global economy are shifting speeds, with slower growth in emerging markets and a measurable increase in many advanced economies. In the International Monetary Fund's latest World Economic Outlook, the fund projects that global growth will average just under 3 percent this year, picking up to 3.6 percent next year. So I think it's a case of, uh, of good news and bad news. The good news in advanced economies, so the US, in the U.S., private demand is strong. Uh, so unless there are fiscal accidents, uh, then uh, the recovery should continue. Japan is still doing well. Uh, and Europe, the good news is uh, Europe seems to have started growth again. Uh, in emerging market economies, that's where the, the bad news is. And, uh, in many countries, growth has been lower than we expected and has declined quite a bit over the last two years. The IMF says growth in the U.S. will pick up with a recovering housing market, more household wealth, and increased bank lending. Continued monetary stimulus from the Federal Reserve and fewer new tax increases and spending cuts next year will also help growth. That's provided that Congress doesn't throw up roadblocks by failing to raise the debt ceiling. However, plans for the Fed's tapering of its large-scale bond purchases have already had an impact on global markets, resulting capital outflows, increasing bond yields, and declines in stock markets sounded a wake-up call for many emerging market countries. There are two effects, right? U.S. growth stronger, that's good. Uh, but high interest rates, which are likely to lead to some capital outflows, less good. Some countries, the net effect, for most countries, the net effect will be positive, for some, maybe not. So I think that's what we're looking at, looking forward for the next few years, right? Although markets have stabilized now, the outflows could return if the Fed's tapering is combined with concerns over even softer growth in emerging markets. The IMF says that calls for urgent action. So I think there are, there are two lessons from that. The first one is if you have macroeconomic imbalances, say a fiscal deficit or inflation too high, you better do something about it. You should have done something about it anyway, but given the pressure from the investors, you really have to do it, right? So that's lesson one. Uh, not all countries have problems. Some are fine, but some are not, right? The other is with respect to these capital outflows. The question is how do you deal with them? And I think the lesson there is in most countries, the way to do it is just let the exchange rate depreciate and adjust to this. Stronger growth in Europe is in sight as its economies are no longer operating under the shadow of questions about the future of the Eurozone. To build on the gains made so far and strengthen the currency union, the Euro area still needs a full-fledged banking union with an effective common backstop. In the core, uh, I think growth has started. But two things have to happen. One for the short one, which is clarification of the bank's balance sheet. Now that's in process, but it really has to happen. The other is for the medium run, structural reforms, so that growth is higher. For the periphery, a bit less optimistic. I'm not sure the corner has been turned, but it may be. Uh, there are some good news. Uh, on the export front, many of these countries are really increasing exports quite a bit. That's good news. But internal demand is still weak. And so it's a fight between the two, and at this stage, very low growth is still uh, the forecast. The IMF says that the world's biggest economies must urgently adopt growth-friendly policies, or the global economy risks getting stuck in low gear for years to come.